Sayam Minakshi Upreti. Our top focus will be China, the birthplace of COVID. The same country which had fooled the world once and gotten away with it. But this time it looks like the same story is replaying once again. While masks were becoming a thing of the past and we were going back to our normal pre-COVID lives, a new COVID scare has cropped up its ugly head once again. This time, China is in denial mode. As usual, it started with China denying an uptick in the cases to a timid acceptance of around 4,000 cases across the country and zero deaths. All those claims today have been exposed in front of the world with gut-wrenching pictures of overflowing mortuaries and hospital beds. Now, a report has come out which suggests that the cases could be touching, believe it or not, 35,000 a day. In fact, this report also suggests that in just one month, that's December alone, 248 million people were infected with COVID in China. Documents also show that deaths were not even discussed in official meetings, indicating an obvious and massive cover-up attempt by the Chinese authorities. The rise in cases has led to a massive COVID scare amidst not only the neighbouring countries, but the world. The question now is, will the world let go China once again without any repercussions? Can we unite and make China pay for its COVID lies? We'll open it up for a discussion. Dr. Sanjeev Bagai, Chairman, Nephron Clinic, joining us. He's also a Padmashri Awardee. Dr. P.S.V. Rao, Consultant Surgeon at the Manipal Hospital. Hebbal in Bengaluru, joining us. Gautam Mukherjee, Senior Journalist, also with us. I welcome all of you, gentlemen. And first of all, many thanks for joining us on this extremely important discussion. Dr. Bagai, I'm going to start with you, first of all. China's canards, China's lies have been exposed in front of the world. This report shows that as compared to what China claimed, 4,000 cases in total, zero deaths, the truth is completely different. It seems like that the same horror story which played when COVID had just begun is once again really replaying in front of the world and the world is watching silently. This time, sir, can we go China or can we let go rather China once again without any repercussion whatsoever? And if that happens, would, would it not mean that no action can ever be taken against China? Good afternoon. So I think the entire uh, edifice of uh, the China's horror story has been based on a false narrative and comprehensive lies. Uh, they have committed a global fraud the first time and they are just about seeming to start to do it all over again. Uh, we have no doubt that this is very a sad and a miserable essay uh, on the entire depiction, the management, the planning, the strategy of the, of the COVID rollout. Uh, the vaccines have been substandard. It was pushed into the market. They've been withdrawn in many countries. Uh, the poor efficacy of vaccines is actually hurting citizens now. Their so-called zero COVID is zero intelligence. It has never, never been done anywhere in the world. It defies medical science. Uh, they have no value for, for human lives and ethics. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, this is a, a tragedy which is unfolding right in front of our eyes. We have no numbers on the genomic sequence. We have num no numbers on the day-to-day -day data. We have no numbers of the exact death rate. We have no numbers of the exact number of infections. Flights from China in and out are still continuing. The same happened two and a half years back when the first set of people as laborers went to north of Italy, where in a place known as Lombongni, there was millions and millions of people who got infected and thousands died. My bottom line is that China has to be made accountable financially, socially, medically. They have to pay a price for what they have done. They cannot hide away from it. They have not allowed an organization like WHO, which I don't think much of in any case, to even conduct a neutral inquiry for two and a half years. They fudged the evidence, they've eliminated the data. We don't need global outliers. I think the world is flat. If you want to live in the world, you have to obey and follow the simple commandments of the global order. If you think you want to live alone, I think and that's what's going to happen to them. Absolutely. And Dr. P.S.V. Rao, what would you like to add to this? Because when it comes to the role of WHO as well, sir, you have spoken extensively about the same end of the day. If top organizations like the WHO turn a blind eye to China's lies, then 
what really are the options in front of the world end of the day china is uh, continuing to be a repeat offender it's the birthplace of covid they have been hiding facts about number of cases number of deaths in china from the word go and that's one of the reasons why we are in such a situation to begin with good afternoon to you and to all the listeners it is very ironical that the same who which helped china which uh, just uh, repeated whatever china told them to uh, say uh, 3 years ago when the pandemic uh, started they are uh, they uh, some time back had a um, report which was uh, based on a statistic statistical method used for small countries which they extrapolated for india and then claimed that india had underestimate um, under reported the number of cases the same who is now keeping quiet they are supposed to uh, uh, find out what exactly is going on in any part of the world where there is a um, outbreak of disease and uh, guide the rest of the world forget guiding they they are being guided by china and the chinese regime the communist regime there is so insecure that if their own public comes to know and they will uh, come there will be an uprising there as to how badly they are misma- uh, mismanage under the so called zero covid policy which i spell as x i r o instead of z e r o so this uh, involved just locking up uh, doing mass testing locking up people in a uh, entire area just because there will be one case there and thus infecting the rest of the crowd uh, who are locked up with that case and uh, now when there was a public uh, severe public protest because it was affecting their entire life mm. and uh, their sustenance and existence they continued to they just withdrew the whole thing um, and said okay do whatever you feel like and hence uh, the um, there is this huge surge now the chinese population never was exposed uh, didn't have a proper vaccination it is not only the vaccines were not effective the vaccines were given as priority to the youngsters rather than to the elders and to the uh, medical workers and uh, now you have a huge vulnerable population which has not even been exposed to the uh, milder forms of the disease which uh, was due to the prolonged uh, lockdowns that they were not even exposed to that so you neither ha- uh, have herd immunity uh, nor, uh, nor uh, is the vaccination been affected now in this situation what have they done they have changed the definition of uh, death due to covid and they have announced that a, a death will be called a covid death only if there is a respiratory um, pneumo- uh, pneumonia or a respiratory problem Uh, if the patient dies of any other reason um, even though he, he has uh, it is because of covid but he dies of uh, say heart failure or he desi- uh, dies of a clot to the uh, heart or the brain this will not be treated as covid death so they are obviously juggling around with the uh, statistics and the statistical methods in addition to suppressing the whole figures and uh, the media including you have been showing us uh, images of all the number of uh, dead bodies lined up at the mortuary the number of uh, uh, people on the floor of hospitals because there are not yeah. even hospital beds so uh, uh, there is no doubt as to what they are uh, how much they are suppressing and what is going on there absolutely Over and you know, you, since, since you speaking of these ha- gut wrenching visuals as well gautam mukherjee those visuals were for everyone to see i mean the visuals have gone viral how uh, mortuaries are overfull uh, there are bodies everywhere lack of hospital beds you know in the backdrop of those viral images and visuals this report hasn't come as a surprise to anyone one always knew that the number of cases in china is rising there is a massive uptake of course uh, the fact that there have been millions of cases 35 million in a day uh, that is rather jarring and shocking of course it sends shock waves across the world once again you know coming back to the same question what about the china conundrum why are we so He, unable you know to act against china can the world not make china pay for its lies for its canards because time and again it's becoming obvious that they are jeopardizing the health of the world 
Minakshi, it seems obvious that the world, uh, as you put it, is not interested in penalizing China. 250 million infections. And as you said, 35 million a day. That's the rate of growth. Uh, I cannot expect if they didn't do it three years ago, two years ago, even a year ago, nothing is going to happen if you're talking of the West or you're talking of the UN or you're talking of the, uh, you know, the UNSC or the G7. Silence is mm. what you're going to get. Yes. What India is doing is more to the point. We have uh, insisted on RT-PCR tests uh, for visitors from five countries, including China, mainly China, but also uh, other neighboring countries in the Asia Pacific. Uh, here we have geared up for uh, an outbreak should it come. Uh, but we are in a very different position. Our our uh, vaccines are 76% plus effective, whereas the Chinese vaccines are 15%, 12% effective. Uh, so, and, and most, almost over a billion people in India have had uh, not two doses, but even a booster dose on top of it. Uh, the, the, the government is not recommending more doses. They're just saying that one ought to be careful in crowds and, uh, you know, re-adopt the wearing of masks if you're going into obviously hazardous uh, territory. Now, this is, uh, so it's every country for itself. And we, as a very highly populated country, have to be very careful. Uh, but it's more uh, a commonsensical a sort of approach that the government of India has taken uh, at this moment in time. And hopefully we will uh, get by without too much damage. Hmm. Minakshi. Well, absolutely, sir. You rightly said, you know, India's response is robust. Indian government has been prepared. Uh, the number of inoculations which we have done, Dr. Bagai, I'm sure you would agree with this. It's phenomenal. There's a lesson for the world to learn from India. But when it comes to China, they have been the exact opposite. They have been hiding the truth. Uh, they have been lying about the number of COVID cases from the time COVID originated till date. We don't know if COVID was man-made uh, or it, uh, you know, where it even started from China. Till today is not even ready to accept that COVID originated from that Wuhan lab or around that Wuhan lab. Yeah. So I think what's, uh, what is important here to understand is that the India's vaccination drive uh, is perhaps one of the fastest, uh, safest, and the most precision accurate, medically, scientifically speaking, in the world. Uh, we are reaching more than uh, approximately 250 crore vaccines. Uh, we've immunized, like I said, more than 90, 95% of the adult eligible population. Uh, and the next step is now the intranasal vaccine. A quick word on the intranasal vaccine is it's, it's quick, it's economical, it's extremely safe. It gives you mucosal secretory IgA immunity, which is very important as your first line defense as a barrier to your nasal, nasal mucosa. And more importantly, it gives you long term memory T cell response in your lungs. Uh, having said that, our approach at the present moment is uh, one of precaution, one of public messaging. Uh, we as a nation have developed tremendous amount of herd immunity, what we call as community acquired immunity. I must add, it's not only with regards to COVID, but a host of other viral infections. Indeed, even influenza gives you cross-reactive immunity towards COVID in the long run. Uh, overall, I think our innate uh, national, at a larger level, innate immunity is actually coming to the fore. We are in a well-placed position, but obviously the message is do not be complacent and take simple precautions. I've always said it's better to wear uh, a simple mask which is non-invasive uh, it costs nothing it saves you almost close to 90 95 percent of ingress and egress of infection and it's definitely better than having tubes down your throat 
being ventilated in a hospital ICU. Well, fair but enough, sir. You know, you've made some pertinent points and uh, the advisory which you're giving for the public, we appreciate that. And masking, social distancing, that's something which the people must do any which way. But Dr. P.S.P. Rao, if you could come in here, isn't it frustrating, rather infuriating, that at a time when we are almost forgotten about COVID, we are we're going back to our normal day-to-day -day lives, once again, we are trapped in the same vicious cycle, we are speaking of the same mask, we are speaking of the same social distancing, etc., which which must happen. I must, you know, underline that. But all of this is happening courtesy China because of their lies, because of their canards, because of uh, their habit of hiding the truth, brushing uh, the facts regarding COVID under the carpet. Had China won the world that so-and-so variant has come, the cases are going up, maybe the world could have been better prepared right from the beginning. I'm not just speaking about this particular variant, sir. Yes, uh, Menakshi. There is a huge difference between the way the, chi uh, the same China um, behaved when the SARS outbreak occurred also in China and the way they have behaved this time. The reason is that last time they knew it was a, not a bio weapon. So they immediately investigated it. They allowed investigations by others. Very quickly, the alternate host was uh, uh, identified as to and the how the uh, SARS virus had spread from ba uh, bats to the alternative host and then to humans. All this was uh, done and measures were taken. This time it was a bioweapon and uh, that has been proved because of the uh, genetic insertions which was first revealed by our own IIT group and uh, also confirmed by others especially the furin cleavage site, which was meant specifically for the human beings. Now, uh, no criminal is going to ever admit that uh, he did the job. So don't expect China to uh, uh, say that uh, uh, we uh, please come and investigate. This is what happened. There was a uh, we were preparing a bioweapon and hmm. it leaked. And uh, uh, America had multiple leaks from their bioweapon labs, but those labs were in wilderness. They were not in the middle of one of the biggest cities of US. Hmm. These people went and put up a, a bioweapon uh, lab in the middle of a, one of the biggest uh, cities of China. Obviously, that was very foolish of them yeah. and uh, it spread. And the Americans had actually um, outsourced it to them. Hmm. Now, the American establishment doesn't want to uh, ag uh, agree that they have been involved in it. So you have the two biggest powers, I mean, uh, at least the financial powers yeah. or economic powers, uh, P2 um, out of the P5, uh, out to suppress this whole thing because the, otherwise they will have to no, pay were, liabilities, they, yeah, huge were, liabilities. There were reports earlier also, a very explosive report had come, which I think you're referring to, which it, which it said that uh, US was also funding uh, research in China and that was one of the reasons uh, or how uh, the COVID or coronavirus to begin with had spread. But Gautam Mukherjee, you know, these speculations have been continuing. Nobody can say, pinpoint and say that this is the exact reason for the origin of coronavirus. But one thing is undeniable and that is China has been hiding the truth. They have been under-reporting the cases. They have been lying about the number of deaths which have taken place in their country. All of this evidence, all of this, you know, the, the, these numbers are very, very important and crucial because they help the world, uh, you know, come up with a requisite response. And this Hiding of facts by China is causing the world a great deal. It's one of the reasons why once again, you know, we are discussing COVID. COVID scare is back. Who knows the variant? You know, it's a very, uh, if not virulent, it spreads very rapidly. What if it comes in India, neighboring countries? It's very obvious that China doesn't give two hoots about what happens to its neighboring countries or the world simply because it's hiding the truth. Well, I mean, actually, the main thing is it hides the truth from its own people. Yes. They've got a very, very uh, effective censorship model going. And uh, they've also locked down, as you know, millions and millions in different cities. Uh, they don't really uh, operate in the same way as an open democracy does. And they fudge information routinely on everything from their economics, their debt 
profile, the success rates of the different uh, enterprises, as well the exports, what is authentic information emerging out of China? Hardly anything. Having said that, there is a degree of collusion, as Dr. Rao pointed out, between America and China on the present situation. China holds that in its hand as a possible whip should uh, the U.S. get overly active on this front because the development of bioweapons is, is, is ostensibly banned. And yet the biggest perpetrators are China and the U.S. and the European Union. So who yeah. is going to bell the cat? Well, absolutely. Nobody is interested. That's very, very obvious. But what about travel restrictions, you know, from China? Dr. Bagai, is that something which, you know, countries and governments should look at as far as India is concerned? We all know that the health minister has just an hour ago or so made an announcement uh, that RT-PCR will be mandatory for people coming from China. But to begin with, should we allow people or Chinese nationals to come to our country, especially at a time uh, when the COVID cases are at an all-time rise in their country. Is that possible? Do you see it as a possibility, sir? Uh, there is a big difference between what should be done and what is being done. Hmm. Uh, what should be done is for sure that we should have a travel restriction. Of course, a travel advisory is different. Yeah. But people in and out of China, yes. And anyone having visited China, at least in the last 30 days, not 10 days, 30 days, should be screened very vigorously. Uh, but having said that, what is uh, at a larger point is there are international tribunals and international courts of justice available. Mm. I think India can take the lead of filing cases against China and there is enough evidence, enough evidence and enough evidence yes. to basically start an investigation. At least let the world know how the facts roll out. There is a tipping moment in history that happened after the world wars when the major four countries, five countries got together to bring down Hitler. This is around the time which I foresee the countries need to gather. It's more a moral conviction rather than a financial conviction. We need morality to step in to hmm. make sure that the people who propagated this crime are actually held guilty and prosecuted. Okay. Gautam, would you like to come in here before I go to Dr. PSP Rao? What do you think? You think it's a possibility uh, dragging China to an international tribunal? End of the day, it's very obvious that organizations like the World Health Organization uh, or perhaps even the UN have uh, proved to be completely useless. In this case, they have hardly been able to take any action against China. In fact, uh, the World Health Organization's record is rather checkered. They have, uh, to begin with initially, they had given a clean shit to China uh, when it came to COVID origins. Well, Menakshi, with respect to Dr. Bagai, I would remind him that the International Court at The Hague did find against China uh, in its attempt to block the South China Sea um, and, and, and found that it was violating the international law of freedom of the seas. Yes. China says we don't care, we mm. don't recognize the International Court and uh, we insist the South China belongs to us. Hmm. South China Sea belongs to us. Uh, I don't think we ought to be wasting our time taking China to court anywhere. We are minnows compared to China, three, four trillion dollars to 18 and a half trillion dollars. We should look after ourselves, hmm. which we have done well hmm. in the last several bouts of the epidemic and we should continue to do so. It is more about Indians doing something in the Indian national interest. We are simply not of the heft at present to take China to a dock and make anything stick. If America can't do it, India has no chance at all. Hmm. Significant point, Dr. PSP Rao, if you could come in here. So what do you think should be India's response? End of the day, uh, we need to secure our country. The response 
uh, till now, in fact, in the last uh, two to three waves of COVID has been rather remarkable. The number of people inoculated is phenomenally high. In fact, India has even provided vaccines to the world. Third world countries in Africa as well have gotten vaccines from the Indian government for free. But what do you think in the backdrop of uh, this new COVID threat, the variant which has emerged in China, what should be India's response? What more do you think the Indian government, sir, needs to do at this point of time? First, let me emphasize why we succeeded. Good communication meant we have the lowest vaccine hesitancy rate in the world. This is a very important point. Second, we already had a well-oiled mechanism for mass immunization. Hmm. Thanks to our polio drive and other infectious diseases, we already had a good mechanism. What we needed was a good vaccine, which uh, usually takes about 10 years to develop, but we managed in one year. There were a lot of people, both from the private and public sector, involved in it, and of course, our prime minister pushing the accelerator. Then, uh, this uh, whole uh, thing was given free, and it was uh, distributed well, and the whole uh, thing was done extremely well. Uh, third point, we have the experience of controlling the Nipah virus outbreaks, three of them which occurred, one in West, uh, two in West Bengal and one in Kerala. And uh, we stopped that right at uh, where it started. So it didn't even spread in India, leave alone spreading it to the whole world. So we have experience of how to handle a pandemic. Yeah. WHO knows that, but refused to do anything about it. Hmm. This is where the whole tragedy is. Now, hmm. what do we normally do? For see the Nipah virus and the SARS virus, we still don't have a vaccine hmm. after all these years. How do we control it? By having um, uh, doing testing, yeah. identifying the people infected, following uh, who is the other con and having containment zones or quarantine. Hmm. Ideally speaking, I have suggested this three years ago, but I know that it's not going to work because the rest of the world is not going to cooperate. Really, if the whole of China is in, uh, infected hmm. and it is not revealing it, the world should have got together and said the whole of China is a containment zone. Yeah. No one will go into China, no one will come out. Hmm. No trade with China, no import, no export. Yeah. But this is, a, uh, this is possible if the whole world cooperates. Hmm. But uh, I don't see this cooperation going on because the two strongest powers, and like uh, Dr. Mr. Gautam Mukherjee said, even um, Europe is uh, very reluctant to take any action against China. So well, yeah. in this sort of situation, it is very difficult to isolate China. Mm. That would be the thing that very work. significant point. Lukewarm response when it comes to fixing accountability on China from the side of the world. That seems to be the biggest problem. Is it possible to declare entire China a containment zone? Should travel from China be allowed at a point when the cases are at an all-time high? And most importantly, shouldn't China be made to pay? Shouldn't they be made accountable? for all the lies which they have spread far as COVID is concerned, for all the truth of COVID numbers which they have been suppressing. But can the world unite to make China pay? As of now, it seems a little unlikely, but that's the hope which we all have. Uh, on that note, I thank all the guests who joined us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.